Good evening, God's Prayer Warriors. Brother Felix here. And tonight, brothers and sisters, we are going to be reading from Luke chapter 13, verses 22 through verses 30, 35. So again, we are going to be reading from Luke chapter 13. Verses 22 through verses 35. The name God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I thank you for today. I thank you for my life, Lord. I thank you for my wife, Teresa. And I thank you for my beautiful children. Emmanuel, Ariana, Carlos Felix, and Luis Enrique. Lord, I thank you for tonight's Bible study. I thank you for your Holy Scripture. I thank you for loving and forgiving us. I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you for breathing life into me and my, all my loved ones and everyone that's watching this video and everyone that they love. I thank you for breathing life into our lungs today, Lord. Thank you. God, I ask what I always ask. May, may there be at least one verse for each one of our ears in tonight's reading. So that's two verses per head. And when we hear or read that verse, may the Holy Spirit be stirred inside of us. And may we have the courage to actually apply your Holy Scripture to our life to give you honor praise and glory in jesus name amen all right brothers and sisters luke chapter 13 verses 22 through 35 jesus teaches about entering the kingdom then jesus went through the towns and villages teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, Make every effort to enter through the narrow door. I repeat, make every effort to enter through the narrow door. Because many... I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will say, we ate and drank with you and you taught in our streets. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, all you evil doers. There will be weeping there and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God. But you yourselves thrown out. People will come from east and west and north and south and will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. Indeed, there are those who are last, who will be first, and first, who will be last. Jesus grieves over Jerusalem. At that time, some Pharisees 
came to Jesus and said to him, Leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. He replied, Go tell that fox. I will drive out demons and heal people today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I will reach my goal. In any case, I must keep going today and tomorrow and the next day. For surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have lo longed to gather your children together. As a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. Look. God bless you, son. Look. Your house is left to you desolate. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And these are the words of our Lord, our God. Amen, brothers and sisters. Let's break this down a little bit. Verse 22 reads, This is the second time Luke reminds us that Jesus was intentionally going to Jerusalem. The other time is in chapter 9, verse 51. Jesus knew he was on his way to die, but he continued preaching to large crowds. The prospect of death did not deter Jesus from his mission. Verse 24 and 25. He said to them, Make every effort to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading. Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I do not know you or where you come from. Finding salvation, brothers and sisters, requires more Concentrated effort than most people are willing to put forth. Obviously, we cannot save ourselves. There is no way we can work ourselves into God's favor. The effort we must put out to enter through the narrow door is earnestly desiring to know Jesus and diligently striving to follow him whatever the cost may be. We dare not put off making this decision because the door will not stay open forever. The door is narrow, brothers and sisters. Wide is the door to hell. Narrow is the doorway to heaven. Don't say, I'll start going to church next week. Don't say, I'll start reading the Bible next month. Don't say, I'll start praying next year. Don't say, well, you know what? I got some things I want to do before I go and seek the Lord to find the Holy Spirit in his word. Before I go ahead and get a relationship with God, I need to get some things out of my life. Stop putting it off. Our days are numbered. 
No one knows when their day will come besides the Lord. But this I guarantee you, we all have a day. What are we waiting for? Stop putting it off. Stop playing with your salvation. Seek the Lord today. The effort we must put out to enter through the narrow door is earnestly desiring to know Jesus and diligently striving to follow him whatever the cost. People play with their salvations every day. You know, and I wish I could sit here and tell you, you know what? Everyone's going to go to heaven. But that's not the reality, is it? What does the Lord say? What did he tell us? Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Man. How horrible would it be to hear that? It takes more than knowing about God. It takes more than knowing how to recite some prayers. It takes more than memorizing some scripture. You have to have a relationship with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. This isn't optional, brothers and sisters. Tonight's reading... Is critical. And the thing about this, I was just talking to my mom about this. Not even two hours ago. And here it's in tonight's reading. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. I know that you dwell inside of me, Holy Spirit. I know that you are leading, you're leading me. You lead my conversations. Thank you. Let's move on to verses 26 and 27. Then you will say, we ate and drank with you. You taught in our streets. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. The kingdom of God will not necessarily be populated with the people we expect to find there. I repeat, the kingdom of God will not necessarily be populated by those people who we expect to find there. Some perfectly respectable religious leaders claiming allegiance to Jesus will not be there because secretly they were morally corrupt. That's powerful. Some perfectly respectable religious leaders claiming allegiance to Jesus Christ, our Lord and King and Savior, will not be there because secretly, in their hearts, in their minds, behind closed doors, they were morally corrupt. They were in it for the wrong reasons. They were in it for themselves. They were in it for self, uh, 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 self-worship, in it for profits. Not in it for Jesus. Not in it to spread the word of God. Not in it to go save souls. Come on, brothers and sisters. He's talking to me right now. He's talking to you right now. 
Let's pay attention and let's listen. And let's apply this to our lives. The people were eager to know who would be in God's kingdom. Jesus explained that although many people know something about God, only a few have acknowledged their sins and accepted his forgiveness. Although many people know something about God, only few have acknowledged their sins and accepted his forgiveness. How many people do we know that acknowledge their sins and accepts the forgiveness of God? And has the courage to forgive others. You have to forgive others so that you can be forgiven. Man, this study hits. It's close to home for me, brothers and sisters. Just listening to Jesus' words. Or admiring his miracles is not enough. Just listening to Jesus' words or admiring his miracles is not enough. We must turn from sin and trust in God to save us. Amen. Turn from sin and trust in God to save us. Verse 29. People will come from the east and west and north and south and will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. God's kingdom will include people from every part of the world. Hallelujah. Israel's rejection of Jesus as Messiah would not stop God's plan. True Israel includes all people who believe in God. This was an important fact for Luke to stress as he was directing his gospel to a Gentile audience. Remember, a Gentile is someone who's non-Jewish. Basically us. Unless you are a Jewish person watching my video. If you're not Jewish, he's talking to us, the Gentiles. I remember that he has sheep from different pens. He's the shepherd. Not all of his sheep are from the same pen, but he will put all the sheep in the same pen. And we will worship with the one good shepherd, which is Jesus Christ. You can actually uh, see how this was an important fact for Luke to stress that he was directing his gospel to a Gentile audience by reading Romans chapter 4 verses 16 through 25 or Galatians chapter 3 verses 6 through 9. Verse 30. Indeed, there are those who are last who will be first and first who will be last. I was just referring back to this verse this morning at work when I was talking to my spiritual father, Pops, Deacon Otis Payne. We were just talking about this verse. Indeed, there are those who who are last, who will be first, and first, who will be last. What's he, what's he mean by that? 
There will be many surprises in God's kingdom. Some who are despised now will be greatly honored then. Some influential people here will be left outside the gates. Many great people on earth in God's eyes are virtually ignored by the rest of the world. Let's repeat that. Many great people on this earth in God's eyes are virtually ignored by the rest of the world. What matters to God is not a person's earthly popularity or how many Facebook followers you have or how many likes you get. Their status, their, their wealth, their heritage or power. But his or her commitment to Christ, the only thing that matters is his or her commitment to Christ. Do you choose to follow him? Do you listen to him? Do you invite the Holy Spirit to be in your temple? Are we trying to love and forgive like Jesus? Every day are we trying to walk like Jesus, talk like Jesus, love like Jesus. That's the key, brothers and sisters. How do your values match what the Bible tells you to value? Put God in first place and you will join people from all over the world who will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of heaven. How do you value how do your values match what the Bible tells you to value? You know Ma my spiritual mother, Miss Betty Payne, Pop's wife. You know, she's, she gave me a quote one time when she was at my job and I wrote it on the board. And it says, number one, you must fully surrender to God. And when she said that to me, you know, I, I wrote it down. That's the first thing we have to do, brothers and sisters. Number one, fully surrender. Surrender to God. If we surrender to him, we will fear him. We will love him. We will honor him. We will praise him. We will give him glory. We will give him thanks. We will listen to him. We will seek him. But we must surrender first. God is not going to force us. You must. That's why we have free will. You have, must make the decision inside your heart to surrender to God and to follow him. Verses 31 through 33. At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, Leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. He replied, Go tell that fox, I will drive out demons and heal people today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I will reach my goal. In any case, I must keep going today and tomorrow and the next day. For surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. The Pharisees weren't interested in protecting Jesus from danger. They were trying to trap him themselves. The Pharisees urged Jesus to leave because they wanted to stop him from going to Jerusalem. Not because they feared Herod. But Jesus' life, work, and death were not to be determined by Herod or the Pharisees. By God. His life was planned and directed by God himself. Amen. And his mission would unfold in God's time and according to God's plan. Hallelujah. Amen. Verses 33 and 34. In any case, I must keep going today and tomorrow and the next day. For surely no prophet can die Outside Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets 
and stone those sent to you. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. What was Jesus, or not, excuse me, why was Jesus focusing on Jerusalem? Jerusalem, the city of God, symbolized the entire nation. It was Israel's largest city and the nation's spiritual and political capital. And Jews from around the world visited it frequently. But Jerusalem had a history of rejecting God's prophets. And you can read about that in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 10. Second Chronicles, verses 24. No, Second Chronicles chapter 24, verse 19. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 30. Or Jeremiah chapter 26, verses 22 through 23. And it would reject the Messiah just as it has rejected his forerunners. Brothers and sisters, don't the world reject God now? Don't they reject Jesus now? I've been told before at a place of employment that I can't say the name of Jesus there because it is offensive to some people. That I can't pray out loud because one could be sued. The world's rejecting Jesus now. They want to take Jesus out of the school, out of courts. They want to take God out of the Pledge of Allegiance. The evil foe has got his... His claws so deep in our society and, and we are so blind to see it. I can't. I can't deny you, Jesus. I love you. I can't deny him. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, don't deny him. Let's stand united. Let's stand in agreement. We cannot afford to deny Jesus. Because when the owner of the house closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I do not know you or where you come from. We cannot afford to deny Jesus any longer. We must teach our spouses, our children, our brothers and sisters, our mothers and fathers, our neighbors, and every ear that will listen. We must teach them the good news of Jesus Christ, the Holy Gospel. Tell them what Jesus has done for us and what he will do for them. We cannot go on denying him, brothers and sisters. It is suicide denying him. Spiritual suicide denying Jesus. We can't afford it. This battle, this war, this spiritual warfare is real between God and Satan. But choose the side that already won, brothers and sisters. We claim victory before the war. We choose God because Jesus already beat Satan. He already beat death. He already beat sin on the cross. Don't go to war on the wrong side. And we cannot afford to be neutral. You have to pick a side. Because you either serve him or you serve the evil one. You either serve the Lord or you serve the devil. There is no in between. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen, brothers and sisters. <sighs> brothers and sisters, don't play with with your salvation. Don't play with your soul. Get right with God. Get right with Jesus. Get right with the Holy Spirit. Not everyone is going to make it into heaven. It's not because I'm saying it. The scripture says it. We read it tonight. We read it tonight. Then you will say, we ate and drank with you and you taught in our streets. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. We read it tonight. Don't play with your soul. And don't play with the soul of your loved ones, of your children, of your spouses. If you want your children and your spouses and your neighbors and your friends and your family to go there, you must walk it first. Be the leader of your family. Show them how to make it to Christ. Show them the path to God. Don't leave it in the hands of someone else because someone else is going to lead them to the evil foe, is going to lead them to death and destruction, to the one who steals, kills, and destroys. Don't leave your salvation of your family, of your children, of your loved ones to the hands of someone else. Take charge and do what the Lord has commanded you to do and, and be the leader for them to follow. Take the first step. Show them the way to God. That's the mission, brothers and sisters. I love you, brothers and sisters. In the name of God, the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. God, I just thank you for tonight's reading. <sighs> Powerful reading. Just thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, I ask for you to, to in Jesus' name, to, to take away the pain for my sister Liz. She's going through some horrible pain right now. Take away the pain from her. I just ask you to, to take away the pain for my mother, to heal them both, to, to, to fill Brother Brian with the, with the Holy Spirit. That you get him out of out of jail here on October seventh. That he, his time is safe, and, and you provide everything for Monica and his children. That you that you strengthen them. That you just bless all your prayer warriors, Lord, and keep us safe. I love you, Jesus, and in your name I pray. Amen. Good night, brothers and sisters. We'll read again tomorrow. I love you.